Hello everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So we're continuing with our QA course, uh, learning QA from zero. And today we're gonna talk about Waterfall. Uh, so Waterfall is one of the first uh, SDLC models and Waterfall model name appeared around 1970s. Waterfall development model looks very similar to classic software development life cycle. So there are stages uh, that the development goes through. Remember, when Waterfall model appeared, the companies still that were, were in the IT industry were big corporations with scientists on board with large computers. So uh, the processes were very scientific and strict, right? So the layout for the Waterfall essentially was in the beginning of the um, IT industry in general. So uh, stages of Waterfall model are creating requirements. So at this very first stage, product requirements documentation created, so-called PRD. And uh, you want to answer questions such as uh, what problem product is solving and what resources are required to do it. So you have to put uh, a good amount of research before you actually start working on the product and on the project uh, to understand what kind of resources you will need to complete it, uh, what might be limitations, what kind of uh, you know uh, maybe guidelines you you need to follow um, and put all this documentation in place. The second stage is design, and in the design stage, software requirements analyzed. So there's software requirements analysis is made. Uh, there's modeling of the architecture. Well-designed systems add to quality, reliability, security, performance of the product. So if you have a well-designed system in place and you're not developing yet, but you're just structuring how everything should work and how it will be implemented, then at the end, as a result, you will have a very well uh, done product, you know, that, you know, would not require um, additional updates or redoing things because from the start, everything was designed in place. So it would work um, as expected at the end, right? Then there's a third stage coding stage. So actually building the product based on the system design, based on the requirements. Uh, it's actually the stage, stage where you, know, you create things that do stuff. So you're actually coding something, right? Uh, the next, the fourth stage is integration and testing. Uh, so during this stage, all the components are brought together. Uh, you know, verification happening that the product actually meets requirements. So in this stage, QA engineers uh, test the code, open bugs. Uh, when the bugs are open, developers fix them. And then uh, QA engineers verify that bugs are indeed fixed and there are no new regressions introduced by the fixes. Okay. And then there's a, a last stage, the fifth stage called operations. And during this stage, uh, there's deployment, there's support, there's maintenance uh, of a complete systems. So if user find issues, then they're fixed, there are updates, patches, there's system monitoring, um, and the, all the live product related activities around it. So like customer support, uh, installation guides and updates, uh, you know, whatever is needed to make sure that you know, the product is stable and working as expected. Okay, so uh, those are stages uh, laid out and defined pretty clearly. Uh, they can take significant amount of time so preparing documentation can take you know a good 30 percent of the time then uh, and design can take uh 20 maybe and then you have 30 percent for coding and then 20 percent for uh testing and then you know the rest once that it's up it's just life product that is operational right so but all of the stages can take some amount of time to complete and this process is sort of rigid in place um I tend to imagine waterfall uh, like this. So for me, it's more of a staircase where you have set of steps that you go through uh, in order to get to the exit final product, right? So I like to envision waterfall model as a staircase with a set of steps. Each step takes some time to complete. And once product is out, only maintains, uh, maintenance remains. Uh, you might find in line that uh, last stages of waterfall model are deployment and maintenance, but in the original model, they all part of operations. Uh, so if you do your research, and I will add some links under the, this video where you can read more about uh, 
what a full model and how it how it happened to be what does it include and maybe more details on the stage itself um but yeah in the core it is what i'm telling here based on my experience uh, what waterfall is all right um and if we talk about advantages and disadvantages so since the time the waterfall appeared a lot of new methodologies came to be uh mostly starting 2000s and new methodologies we're going to talk about agile based are you know very popular right now but you have to think about the time when uh waterfall appeared right what kind of companies were running it and uh it's still good it's i mean it still can be used in some sort in some industries uh and i'll give you some examples but uh, if we talk about advantages of waterfall uh, methodology so it is well planned and documented it's hard to do anything impossible to do anything without documentation first being in place uh we it was in waterfall the stages are clearly defined so there's documentation design there's development there's testing so everything is uh, perfectly uh, staged and you know when it's what happening right it's a structured approach so there's not no chaos everything is structured uh and the requirements are set in place uh, it can be an advantage it can be a disadvantage but i think when you have set in place requirements and you have set in place expectations you can actually get the product that you want it that you design for that you work for uh and you have the quality that goes with this product right um it creates mostly monolithic applications. Uh, this also can be advantage or disadvantage, but I put it as an advantage because your product is stable and ready. And once it's released, there's maintenance, yes, uh, support, uh, but you know, there's, again, no chaos. If it's out there and it's working, it will be working and working, working. You know, Ten years after, it still be working as defined. Uh, Advantages also can be that if it's well planned, it will have realistic estimates, dates, and contracts in place. So if something's been contracted, uh, that this work will be completed within a period of time, uh, the requirements were set in place, uh, how long the development will take was understood, everything was cost estimated. So at the resu- as a result, uh, you will have you know a product around the date when it was scheduled. So uh, I think for waterfall it is good for regulated industries uh big corporations places where the requirements are clearly defined there's some you know expectations of what product have to do there are actual examples on the market you know uh, that has it working for a while uh how it's working right um we can think about situation maybe in finance when there's some internal development and uh let's say there's regulations around the product the product does not need uh, external financing or investors there are no really competitive startups on the market that will take your share if you don't do frequent updates uh, based on what customers want right so let's say there's a, a financial institution and they develop internal application that has to be secured uh, just for that uh, company so they will allocate budget uh, they will put in estimates in place what needs to be done, what functionality goes in, what is allowed in this uh, application, what is not allowed. Uh, maybe they'll hire some contractors, right? And those will give them estimate of the cost and how long the work will take place. Uh, maybe uh, with the regulations in place, they have some other project that already, or you know, they did a similar thing. Um, so they can have a plan laid out. Uh, so they will finance it, the work will be done, everything will be tested, the issue will be ruled out and fixed, and then as an output, you will have a working product, uh, you know, that where you know uh, how it works, and it will be working like that for quite a long time. It's just defined there. Um, another example would be like medical industries, uh, some government industries, uh, some of the older like military projects that were done in 80s, 90s still use like really old code. Um, so yeah, uh, it's still used mostly in big corporations, uh, in the companies that don't require outside financing, that have uh, you know a, a good understanding of what they created, the expect- ex- expectations are clear and will not change. Uh, you can still have this developed and should be uh, developed within a waterfall methodology. Uh, 
Now, uh, disadvantages of waterfall, uh, it's hard to update requirements. So, you know, if something is already set in motion, so if the contract was signed, the estimates were put in place, uh, people hired to do it within the requirements that were defined, you can't just go and change it because, you know, you, you're going to, the cost going to grow. Uh, you know, it's like starting over pretty much. So that also means that going back to previous stages is almost impossible or it's very expensive, right? Uh, another risk is that most of the testing comes after development. Even though during development, there might be some unit tests and, you know, but when you start actually building parts, putting them together, and there's integration happening in actual testing. Um, if, if the design wasn't uh, set in place properly, you might start finding a lot of issues. And then when you find a lot of issues that are going to delay your release date, that's going to, you know, increase the cost. So you, your whole waterfall model can uh, break really fast because, you know, product going to become more expensive. We'll need to hire more developers, maybe other experts. I don't know. Uh, so there is some uncertainty there. So testing that comes after development might impose risks, uh, you know, of finding very critical things that are not easy to fix. Um, the, another thing with waterfall, there's really not a lot of feedback from end users. So there might be in, initially uh, some idea set in place, some research uh, done, but nobody really goes to the end user if, let's say, it is some medical equipment or maybe, you know, some uh, military equipment or something in the in the in the finance industry. There's really no a lot of communication with the end user a lot of times. So it's mostly product owners and the stakeholders, whoever's interested in you know in releasing the product, like maybe a director or you know a bank owner, whatever. So, but the end users don't really get much input. So they are just presented with the product at the end. Uh, and waterfall doesn't really fit well in competitive and changing market. So, you know, if you have a great idea you start working on and you start in capturing shares of the market, but the market changes and you need to adapt and adjust, you need to add new functionalities and your competitors are doing the same, it's impossible, almost impossible to do something like that in the waterfall uh, approach. So you have to be agile for that. Uh, and there, there is a high risk if product fails. So if all of this work was put in and at some of the stages, something went wrong. The estimates were not proper. Uh, if the product fails, it, you know you will bear a lot of costs to actually pretty much restart and redo it. So there are pros, there's there are cons to that approach. But in general, I think you know it works in some situations better than the others. Uh, so for example, if you have uh, some heavily regulated industry, let's say uh, you know some airspace industry or medical industry. You would want your devices when they on the market to be properly tested to abide with all the regulations. You want to have something that is actually working as expected, and there's no not a lot of place for error here because it was clearly defined. The ex expectations were clear, and the work that was put in uh, gave you finished product that is ready to go and it's complete. Um, if if uh, you're in some other industry where this is not the case, so if you would go to a hospital, like you would need equipment that was properly tested and worked on, and you know abide by the standards. So here's you probably wanted to use waterfall model for development, or let's say in construction, you know you have uh, a specific plan in place, the architect drawn everything, you know what kind of materials will be used, how much they cost, uh, how fast you know the whole project is gonna move, how many uh, people will work on it. Um, yeah, you still want probably waterfall here. Uh, now, if you go into something uh, more competitive and fast-paced on the market, like you know you're you're developing uh, new Facebook or some other application, social new social media, new TikTok. Uh, well, yeah, if users want something else, you have to change it. You need to adapt. So waterfall wouldn't work for that, really. Uh, also, in real life. It's, it's hard to find pure waterfall. Or as a matter of fact, any other approach like pure agile or pure you know, uh, Kanban, whatever, pure lean, whatever they want to implement. A lot of places, most of the places uh, use their own interpretation of the development methodology. Uh, 
with some hybrid practices in place. So you'll have a mix of one and another. Uh, you might even ha have mixes of waterfall and agile. Uh, so, for example, from what I've been reading online and uh, researching, so like Microsoft, for example, is using some waterfall-like model uh, with elements of agile. Also, one uh, company doesn't have to use only one methodology. Different teams or different projects uh, can use different approaches. So maybe development will be done in agile. Uh, documentation for the business people, maybe everything's going to be more waterfall model. Uh, or one specific project will be more of waterfall because it's in a regulated industry. Um, and the other will be more in agile because it's you know working on some uh, so st startup like application, right? Okay, so yeah, uh, this is in a nutshell uh, waterfall. So, I mean, it is a lot less waterfall right now because most of the startups and smaller companies use agile, and agile is trendy, agile is newer. Agile came as a result of, you know, waterfall is not being capable of uh, fitting uh, fast-paced uh, industry of IT industry that, you know, it's exponentially growing. Uh, but someplace still, uh, I would rather see them doing waterfall and have a clearly defined requirements and ready product once it's released uh, and not uh, do it in a fast-paced, like, agile style. Okay? So it has its place still. Uh, there there are downsides, there are upsides of it, uh, but yeah. All right, so this was Alex USA Days. Uh, hit like if you like the video, hit subscribe. Uh, there's a link to the playlist for the whole QA series. Uh, everything's going to be in this playlist on YouTube. It's free. So yeah, feel free to subscribe and check out my next videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.